Okay, guys, welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Every time I go to film, there is a distraction. Every time. Right, let's wait for she who must be a babe to bugger off. Come on. She's working out where the gear stick is at the moment. She found the gear stick. Now working out what the D means. Oh, she's found the D. Now she's remembering that the car goes forward. What the... Is she doing now now yeah, she's going she's going gone great okay until the next interruption welcome back to the forensics detailing channel so on the golf while on holiday discovered some paint transfer on the um, uh, offside offside rear driver's side let's call it driver's side My brain's not clever enough to go near an offside this morning Driver's side rear passenger door handle and door panel, a scrape, so uh, contacts. It looks like someone's gone across it. Um, I played around with trying to remove it with um, chemicals previously, um, using cellulose thinners, which I always just jump to first, even though you shouldn't. They weren't effective, so I think it's probably a water-based paint. Like, it might not be um, like an emulsion, like a masonry paint or something, quite chalky paint. So it might have been the missus that done that, or someone that was driving it up against a wall or something, or a post that was painted with some funky paint. That's what I think. Uh, so how am I going to get rid of it? Well, guys, the damage on the handle, this paint damage, and ultimately it's going to need respraying. So there's not too much you can do about this. Detailing likes to, with the greatest respect for some people that detail, like to sort of make you think that detailing can fix all these problems with paintwork and stuff they can't um you know if you're through the clear coat you're screwed if you can feel the scratch you're screwed but with paint transfer all of the, when, when all that paint transfer comes off what you're usually left with looks quite good so it's not as bad as it looks so this is a case of just tidying up this panel this door handle um with about two minutes of invested time and eventually when I come around to sorting it out, and it might be the sort of thing you can paint yourself, flatten it down, primer it. Um, you, could, you could flatten it down, you could primer it, um, and, you know, put go, and get, go down to your local paint shop and get some paint mixed up and get a rattle can clear coat and flatten that back and do a half decent job. You bug it around for hours and it's very easy to balls it up and do a bad job. So sometimes you're better off paying 50 quid or whatever. Although it's, it's always more than you think, isn't it? Anyway, most of this paint started coming off after I'd soaked the paint in water um, and then started abrading it. So I just used a clay bar to go over it and the clay bar was effective but slow. Um, and actually some of the bigger areas of paint, the easiest way to get them off was just scratching them with my thumbnail. Um, it just doesn't sound too clever, but it's better than the thumbnail was the best tool for it. So we got most of the paint off. I also then just took a quite a coarse sanding block and just just sanded it a little bit um, to just flatten it down a little bit, haze it up, um, and take even more of it off. Uh, and it, after you're doing that, it shows you what's kind of left down the bottom. The thin scratch lines. I just clayed those. They didn't. There's no, I wouldn't have gone in with that sanding block, it was too aggressive. The clear coat's better there. And then I took some H8, put it on the little mini rotary polisher, and just whizzed over at about speed three, trying not to heat the paintwork up too much. Very easy to put buffer trowels in, obviously when you're using the rotary and the cutting compounds. And then just slowed down towards the end and just worked over it. A little bit less pressure, you know, just let it all cool down and still work the polish after it's broken down to make sure you don't get the buffer trails and those fine scratches you can barely see them now you've got to be well you, you can see them if you get up close but just you know from a few meters back the car looks normal the door handle you can see it if you look at it but now all the paint transfer is gone it kind of takes your eyes off it car doesn't look embarrassing you know so for the next few months or whatever until we get that sorted it looks okay just like I was mentioning the other video I don't know what to do about this golf um, I've got some mechanical issues that are intermittent and intermittent mechanical issues are always a pain like I've got some sensor problems and some loose connection type problems that I could fix myself I think or it'd be cheaper to try and fix myself and go to the main dealer that will have me for like 300 quid just to investigate it you know two or three hours of troubleshooting money they'll hit me with 
and then they'll just swap the part out anyway. I think I need to probably replace the, the if there's any either the thro there's something wrong with the throttle, some sensor either in the in the accelerator pedal if there is one, <laughs> or the uh, throttle body itself. It could just be a clean. Like I said, I played around with the um, disconnecting the 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 um, head shells to the cables that go in there and put them back in. The errors haven't come back now. Um, I've got another error with the airbag light coming on intermittently. I think I need to take it all apart. I think I can fix that myself. Get a brake apart and fix that. Um, but when you start having to bugger around with your cars like this, I think it might be time to chop it in. You know, the Golf is shot now. Even though it's really reliable, the engine's solid in it. And it will go on for, for a long, long time and make a good car for somebody. Just fancy something different. Fancy something in slightly better condition. One of the realities of car ownership that we haven't talked about much on the channel is if you have a car that you actually use, you take it to the, your Sainsbury's, you know, your, your Walmarts if you're in America. Um, if, you, if you take it to a school to pick up your kids and park it there, if you use public car parks, you will probably pick up about, I reckon, from from what my car gets, at least three or four dents and dinks a year in that car. And it, to fix each of those dents and dinks is always about 150, 200 quid. If you're doing them like one at a time when they appear, they're always more expensive if they go through the paint and you need paint work. Um, and uh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's other people, they get out of the cars, you know the deal, and they just smack their doors into your cars. Um, you know, what's to say about it? That's the reality of car ownership. People just don't give a monkeys about other people's cars. Um, so, do you do you have a nice car that you have to use for all your family stuff? And do you just try and maintain it really well and get all these dinks fixed every time they happen? Or do you just have a car where you say, yeah, you can dink it, I don't care. You know, it's just it's, it's one more dink to the collection of 20 dinks you've got on there. So that's the score with the golf. It's like a dink magnet. Um, and if if you know if it's your pride and joy, if it's this car that's getting dinked when you use it, you go nuts, don't you? Because it hurts. You really you love these cars and you look after them. You spend so much time trying to clean them carefully and not put scratch in. And someone else rolls up next to you and bang, there you go. I have that. Um, so it's a really annoying thing. Um, yeah, so don't know. I think in one day when detailing, about 10 years time when detailing is more popular, I think eventually the insurance companies will have dink insurance for door dinks. Maybe they've already got it now. Door dink insurance. <laughs> okay, guys, so thank you very much for watching. Very informal video, these on the potato cam for um, just do these mainly for the patrons. So thank you very much to my patrons if you're watching for uh, supporting the channel. You guys allow me to do this primarily. Um, there was times when the channel was close to folding and the Patreon, I think, made made an important difference for me, not just in creating another revenue stream, because that's the biggest problem with doing YouTube, especially in the UK. Very hard, guys. Even now, even now, when we're approaching a decent size, it's not great. But Patreon made it doable, and it also meant I could do it without doing what other channels are doing. Um, you, if you do YouTube, you'll you learn a few things about how YouTube works, all the way up to the top, to the biggest channels. It's more about studying the terrain, seeing what other people are doing. Other other people have big viral hits with videos, and then you see all the other channels swoop in and kind of copy those hits. Um, in fact, you're getting channels now that are just built on built on making videos, which are. <laughs> They've seen videos other people have made that have done great, and they're just doing other people's videos, and they're not discovering anything new, because um, you don't need to. Why bother trying to discover videos and fail and do bad content, you know, take a gamble, when you can just copy what you know is going to be successful, you can see why it's been successful, and recreate the sort of background of what that video is doing, sometimes even construct it. So this content, this fake content being done, out there as well which is something i'll talk about at another stage there's all sorts of weird funky stuff going on so i've got to try and resist the temptation to do that patreon allows me to not have to do that sort of stuff although youtube 
that is all YouTube essentially is and every successful channel, believe it or not, all the, there's ch channels out there, maybe nothing to do with detailing that you love and some of these big non-detailing channels are the worst at it, but you don't realize until you do YouTube. It's all about copying. Um, so do I get on board with that? Um, or do I carry on doing what I'm doing? And the stuff that I did when I started the channel, these big kind of product comparisons, no one else was doing that, guys, because they're expensive to do. The scene was smaller and quite niche then, um, and now there's hundreds of people doing it. I'm quite proud that I think the channel, however small, has influenced, I think, YouTube detailing to a certain extent um, in a good way, and that's that's all that's all a good thing, I suppose. But uh, it's hard, it's hard doing this, um, and you can't always have your foot firmly on the accelerator pedal when you're doing it and you need to um, so I need to get my foot back on that pedal and get some of these product tests done do some of the bigger comparisons which are a little bit of a little bit more interest and we will be doing that soon um, so thank you for you guys to you guys on the patreon page for uh, supporting me because like I say that's made a massive difference and just being able to have that kind of private closed community there to to bounce ideas off and people Having people that believe in you um, enough to support you is is a really cool thing. Because when you don't have that Patreon, you're kind of on your own, just chucking the videos out and interacting with the comments. And it's quite a kind of lonely kind of place doing it that way. So Patreon is fantastic for me. And I hope you guys get something out of it as well. So, But thank you very much for your support. Um, and uh, like I say, quick informal video. Enjoy the weather at the moment, guys. We've got awesome weather. Uh, get out in that sea if you can. <laughs> Do some swimming and stuff like that. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.